we are part of the classical mechanics group, as Dr. Ackles said. Uh, my name is Rude. My name is Vasista. And I'm Arnav. Uh, so here's a brief overview of our project and what exactly we're trying to accomplish. So as a group, we work on revolutionizing classical mechanics with the use of machine learning. And as Dr. Ackles said, we are focusing on unraveling the dynamics of moving objects, specifically predicting the motion of chaotic systems using neural networks and other machine learning techniques. So as to what chaotic systems exactly are, they are dynamic, extremely complex, and unpredictable systems that are highly sensitive to initial conditions. As our project focuses on predicting the trajectories or oscillations of these systems, we need to use calculus to come up with differential equations, like Dr. Ackles said, that can help us predict the state of a chaotic system at a given time. Once we have the differential equations, we need to solve them using a separation of variables technique called Runge-Kutta fourth method to get the position of the chaotic system at the time. However, predicting the actual motion of the pendulum requires putting the position data into a machine learning model or a neural net. And we also need to, yeah, so we also need to focus on the underlying patterns and deterministic laws from our research which we are currently doing right now. So as Dr. Ackle mentioned, we are currently focused on the double pendulum, which is one of the most well-known chaotic systems. And basically all it is is just a pendulum attached to another pendulum on the end of it. And uh, by changing the initial angles of the pendulum, it can result in vastly different motions. And as you can see in the picture, from the vertical line down from the from the joint point, we see that the theta one and theta two can be any angle. And depending on those angles, the trajectory of the pendulum is going to change. So we derive these differential equations using calculus. And as for what each thing represents, u represents the rate of change of the angle. Uh, M M1 and M2 represent the mass. L1 and L2 represent the lengths of the two pendulums in the double pendulum system. And G is the gravitational force on acting upon the pendulum. And you guys can... Okay. Yeah, hi. My name is Vasista, and I'm the group lead of this project. So before we get into um, the progress, our progress on this specific topic, I'd like to go into um, the applications of this research and where this research would be used. So first, th the first application is aviation. So being able to predict the motion of chaotic systems such as wind can result in better climate prediction for more effective flight planning and reduction of delays and cancellations. If, once we are able to predict climate, we can also forecast the electric power load of a flight, which would also save energy. and we would also be able to uh, predict aviation accidents. So this has shown chaotic ca characteristics in the past, and uh, this would be a really good um, area of uh, application. We also have industrial uses. So um, this research could lead to more efficient airplane wings. We'd also be able to develop better power, power delivery systems. We'd also have more efficient and possibly more powerful turbines. Um, we would also have more efficient chemical reactions in industrial plants, and we would also have increasingly good conveyor belts for factories. So as you can see from this, this research has the potential to really revolutionize any industry that it's in. We also have some healthcare and um, other general uses. So this research could lead to implantable defibr defibrillators. So these are devices that send a current to the heart to restore its beat, and this also shows chaotic characteristics. Um, we would also be able to make better brain pacemakers. So these similar to defibrillators, but for the brain. So these stimulate brain tissue with electrical charge. So we'd also be able to make better pacemakers. 
Another potential use case is artificially stimulated chaotic brain waves that could help inhibit epileptic seizures. One um, other interesting use case is satellite control. So um, in the 1970s, we had the International Sun Earth Explorer 3, which um, kind of used chaotic theory in order to uh, propel the satellite in the direction that NASA wanted it to go in. And um, we would also be able to predict the stock market, which has historically shown chaotic characteristics. And other than that, there's also applications for human convenience. So one such um, application is we have more natural air conditioning. And um, yeah, uh, here's some progress of our research. Okay, so I'll show what we've done so far. Uh, We've used the runge kata method to solve the differential equations that I displayed before. Um, we've also created an animation for the double pendulum. We've used runge kata method to solve the triple pendulum, as Dr. Akko was talking about, in order to see the patterns of chaotic motion and how angles change based on the pendulums and what, how movement changes as well. We implemented friction into the double and triple pendulum equations. So now they're a part of the function of those, of those, um, the pendulums. And lastly, we are currently working on predicting the movement using LSTM networks like Dr. Ackle explained. And this was our solution to the differential equations. It's quite lengthy, but yeah, that, that's how we solved it in Python. Hi, I'm Arnav. So from the code above, this bottom image is shows the double pendulum and the top image shows the triple pendulum. So what you can see in both images is that there's one graph line that ends up going chaotic. Some, and for this, um, it's the green one and the orange one. So what that basically is, it's... um. It's the last pendulum for each one, which ends up going way more chaotic than what we expected, while the other previous pendulums are more constant and predictable. Okay. Um. So this image, so we made a simulation for the dumb, double pendulum. However, to make it run quicker and add in a third pendulum so we can experiment better, we still would need access to the ACRP computer, more specifically the GPU space, because this is just a sped up version we've made with some video editing software. The actual version is way slower, which isn't necessarily ideal. Okay, so this is a longer, more, this is the actual code for the double pendulum. Because we can have fit it on one image, from the bottom, it from the left image, it continues to the right image. And this is without friction. So now we'll be going into the analysis. So our first observation was that the initial conditions of the graph actually changed the motion of the pendulum a lot more than expected. So as you can see on the left, we have the initial condition of the first part of the pendulum as 60 degrees from the vertical line that we showed on in the previous slide. And we have the second angle or the for the angle for the second pendulum at 90 degrees. And from the graph, we can see that although the motion is a little bit chaotic, it has bumps now and then in the graphs, but it's not as chaotic as the graph on the right, which goes all the way down into negative 1,200 degrees, meaning that it spun in one direction multiple times. So that's a multiple of three, 360. And going now going into the right pendulum, our theta one was is now 90 degrees and our theta two is 60 degrees. And from this, we inferred that theta one actually has a much greater impact on the trajectory of the pendulum than theta two does. So increasing the angle of theta one would mean a more chaotic motion than increasing the angle of theta two. Okay, 
So for this one, we were able to implement friction into our graphs to make it more real realistic. And instead of a constant friction for this, friction is actually a function of the angle. So the friction chang changes, changes at each rotation. For our initial conditions, we, add, we put theta 1 is 88 and theta 2 is 51. So the top image, that has no friction. And you can see how wildly chaotic it is, especially with theta 2, as Harude said in the previous slide, because theta 1 is so much uh, bigger than theta 2, and it's such a large value, it makes it extremely chaotic, going all the way down to negative 750. With friction, it's still the same initial conditions. However, the friction is only a small bit, is 0.1. And while it is still chaotic, it looks way more predictable and manageable, manageable than the top image where the image on the bite, the both angles kind of repeat over each other. And based on that, with an increased friction, it makes the system way less chaotic and more stable. And we found the results even when the friction was 0 0.01, it still made it extremely stable. So here are our, our future plans and what we plan to do next. Yeah, uh, so basically the first step we wanna do, well, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna further, um, we wanna continue experimenting with the double and triple pendulums so we can gain more observations and uh, see how this will help us to decide on factors, our activation function, um, the bias weights and things like that. And then the second thing we wanna do is we want to create a simulation of the double pendulum to use as training data for our eventual LSTM neural network. And then the third thing, um, naturally, we want to learn more about LSTM networks so that we can use it in the prediction of the dynamics of the double pendulum to begin with. And then the last thing we would do is we want to apply our research for the double pendulum to other chaotic systems. Um, yeah, so that concludes our presentation. Um, these are our sources, and are there any questions?